Welcome to the Making Pittsburgh Healthy Podcast. You'll hear from the most powerful people in the health industry. The advice, inspiration, and application will rock your world. Let's create the healthiest city in America, naturally. All right. Hey, welcome to another show of Making Pittsburgh Healthy. We not only want to make Pittsburgh healthy, we want to make this world healthier. And we have today Stacy Chalemi on the line. Her mission is to transform the health of millions worldwide. So big goal. She is the author of Complete Guide to Natural Healing, Natural Remedies for Common Conditions, author of 20 books. She's the founder of the Complete Herbal Guide, recognized health and natural remedies expert, 20 years in coaching as a health coach. She writes for Huffington Post, HuffPost, Thrive Global, and Medium, which is owned by Ariana Huffington. If you know that name, she has been a guest of the Dr. Oz Show, local news, numerous radio shows. We are in for a treat today. You're going to hear St- Stacy's story where she was diagnosed at age five of epilepsy. The journey she had been on and to discover natural health was just, it's, it's going to be really cool. You're going to love this. You're going to be excited, motivated, and you're going to hear some news about your health, stress, and hair health. This is, this is going to be really interesting. So Stacy, welcome to the show. Tell us a little bit about yourself, what you like to do for fun, and what gets you up in the morning. Thank you so much for having me. You know, when, it, when I start my day, I really like to like meditate, at least take 15 minutes out of the day just to like focus and relax and, you know, to really, you know, do some breathing exercises and, you know, focus on what my short-term and long-term goals are for the day. Also, you know, sometimes just to walk out on my deck and just to see the trees and just to relax for a few minutes and just take a nice couple of deep breaths and, you know, just focus on, you know, things I'd like to get done. But don't stress yourself out. You just, you know, you relax and sometimes even take some moments out for appreciation, appreciating the world around us. Sometimes we take for granted everything we have and we take for granted, you know, all the wonderful things that nature provides us with, and we tend to get lost in our own little world. And sometimes, so, you know, taking a, a moment in the beginning of the day to put positive thoughts and reinforce yourself with good things in your, in, in your thoughts, and in, it kind of can give you actually the motivation, the inspiration, and even the energy to go through your day on a positive note and really accomplish a lot for yourself. Do you, thinking of that, I, I totally agree with you, and I have a farm and I sit out on my, my porch in the morning. It's usually around five o'clock. I get the, the sun coming up, read my Bible, pray, meditate, mm-hmm. breathe. And I hear the birds. I mean, this is better than any, any app that I could load in for sound. Yeah. Do you think that, this is, a, this is a good start. Do you think that kind of sets your mind, your heart to be open to hear? Because when we get so busy and we get so stressed out, we're going in 90 miles an hour. That's my life most of the time. Many right. times it's hard to hear. Do you think that just sets the tone to be able to even hear what we need to hear? You know, I definitely do. I think if you can just slow down the moment when you first wake up to, to really organize your thoughts and to appreciate life in general and to focus on the positive, just focusing on the positive and focusing on the good things in life can actually give you so much energy, inspiration, and, and motivation to accomplish anything. You know, to me, it's mind over matter. Our mind is so, um, you know, is so strong and, and it has so much influence in our lives. And if we put the right things in our our mind and our thoughts and in our heart, we could actually change our whole mindset and can actually accomplish so much more in life. It's all about how you think and perceive things and how you set short-term and long-term goals for yourself. And it can be so easy just by taking a few moments of the day before you start your day and really putting some good, fresh, positive thoughts in your mind could really have a huge impact on you, yourself, and your life. So people listening may say, well, that, that's real cute. You got this all covered. You must have had a nice upbringing, good family, no dysfunction, healthy life. You were taught this from you were little. Tell us about, about, about your background, what happened at age five, your family life, what the, the trials that you went through, and you look back and you say, you're so thankful for everything you, you had. And people would look at your life and go, oh, please, God, I hope I don't have any of this. But tell us about <laughs> this. this is exciting. 
You know, it all started out when I was five years old. I had a, you know, I had an ear infection and a common cold. And, you know, one day, you know, my, my parents heard a little noise. Their, their room was right next to mine. And my mother got up and she went in my room and I was turning blue and I was having a grand mal seizure. They took me right to the hospital, the emergency room. And, um, you know, they immediately induced me into a, a four day coma. Um, they saw um, something going on and it wasn't very good. And I ended up um, having encephalitis. The virus had traveled to my brain. It went from one thing to the next. It went from an ear infection to the common cold to developing some type of virus in my body somehow. And I, you know, it went through my brain and it caused um, scar tissue damage throughout my entire brain. To this day, they can't locate the scar tissue damage, but it left me with epilepsy. But you know, during this time, I was in a four-day coma. My parents didn't know what was gonna happen. The doctors thought, you know, if anything, she, she may have brain damage or you know, she may, may be paraplegic, but they didn't think, um, you know, they were hoping for the best, but they didn't think you know, much good was gonna happen through this. And I still remember my father telling me he was from Greece and he closed his eyes and he, he was praying to a statue in Greece and he was praying to God just to help us and to, you know, help me. And when he opened his eyes in, in Greece, the statue had a tear that rolled down the, um, like a little fountain. And when he opened his eyes, there was a tear that rolled down my eyes and I had woken up from the four day coma. And the first thing I asked for was McDonald's French fries. <laughs> and uh, there was nothing, you know, um, the, the doctors were really shocked. I, there was, I had no brain damage. I wasn't paraplegic. I was able to function normally, but I was left with epilepsy. And my whole entire life was like a roller coaster ride. I had constant seizures all the time. Um, I went from one doctor to the next doctor trying to get these seizures controlled. And for a little while, I was on phenobarbital and, you know, and up until the, to my, probably my teens, when you go through menstruation and ovulation, um, those, the, you know, the seizures slow down and then they came back up. And I just struggled. It was really hard, you know, dealing with, you know, constant seizures. And, you know, I, I didn't get to do a lot. And I, I had, a you know, in, in society, there's a lot of stigmatism about, the, you know, when people have an invisible disorder, or they have a disease or illness, you know, sometimes they get looked at differently. So it was a constant, you know, um, struggle. And I went through college, and I was, you know, the constant midnight studying and, and all the, all the, um, stresses that you go through when you're in college, you know, caused me to have more and more seizures. And I was like, am I ever going to get through this? What, you know, I, I, I didn't think I was going to be able to finish college. I didn't think I was going to be able to have a normal life. And, and I wanted that so bad. And then one day I decided to write a article and a little letter into the Epilepsy Foundation. They had a magazine and I asked them to please publish this letter. And, and, you know, and I, in this letter, I talked about my life and I asked people, how do you cope with epilepsy? And to, uh, to my shock, and I was shocked, but three to 400 letters came to my doorstep from all over the United States and Canada. Mm -hmm. People were sharing their stories, and they were sharing how they live with epilepsy. And at that point, I realized that I wasn't alone. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. when we have an illness, we, we tend to, you know, feel like we're the only one. We tend to focus on the, on the illness, and we tend to focus on the negative aspects. And, you know, we figure, you know, and it's like, you know, no one's going through this, you know, all this pain and emotional suffering. But there were people all over the world that were, you know, going through the same thing. And that's what I realized. And as time went on, I had taken a lot of those letters and I asked if I could use them. And I started to write a book. And then I had finished college and I put that book aside and I, you know, and then I started to work for a corporation, a big corporation in the city. And one day I was walking in the hallway and I had a grand mal seizure and I fell to the ground. And I still to this day remember the producer walked over me and he kept walking and I saw him and I I was in a, I was partially aware, but I, I was in the seizure, so I couldn't do anything. And, you know, when I woke up probably about 30 minutes later, I was released from my position. Um, and, you know, I, at that time I was just, I didn't let it get to me. I said, you know, I, I'm just not, gonna, I'm just going to just, you know, put it aside and I'm going to keep going. And, you know, I, you know, when I, I started looking for another job and then I started to work on that book that I had started in college and I created a book called Epilepsy, You're Not Alone. And I started to, you know, work on a lot of the stuff that I learned from these people's letters, I actually applied to my life and it actually helped me see my life and my, my disorder in a different aspect. They gave me the, you know, the, the, the hope and the wisdom and the, and the courage to want to move forward. So I started 
doing all these different regimens and I started creating a different lifestyle for myself and I put these things that helped me in the book and then I created I published that book and one day I got an email and a person had read my book they got it in Barnes and Nobles and they said that they were on the verge of suicide and that they you know they didn't they couldn't deal with their with their disorder but they read my book and they applied what I le they learned from me and you know they moved on and they had a they they felt that they had a reason to live and at that point I realized that the power of words, the, the uh, wisdom of words can be so strong. You know, people don't realize but when we say things to other people, it could have a huge impact on that person's life. You know, the things that we say and the things we do, you know, can really influence others and it can really play a big role on another person's lives. And, you know, when I read that and I read how I helped that person, uh, you know, the feeling of accomplishment, to be able to help an other individual, to be able to to, you know save that person's life to be able to be you know be part of that was such a huge achievement and then I, I you know I realized you know maybe working in the big city you know I had this goal about working in the city you know maybe sitting on the on the corner on a Friday night with my girlfriends having a martini and that the older you know when you come out of college and, and you start you know working in the city you know the materialistic things you know you really open your eyes but I realized you know what those things really don't matter you know what matters is being happy they can't bring you happiness and you know helping others brought me happiness and I started to create a little blog on blogger back then Google had a, a little thing called blogger and you know I had that time 400 people came to my website and then I started talking I realized that you know what I don't have to just talk about epilepsy because a lot of the stuff that I did helped me you know but it could help others and then I started um, I got a job working for an herbalist at the same time I was creating my website I was doing a lot of research for him and I was seeing how a lot of different supplements vitamins different ways of living could actually improve and help your 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 uh, your your health and, and your entire life and I started applying a lot of these things to my life and my seizures went from nine seizures a month to six to five to four to three to two and my seizures you know had suddenly became more controlled and I realized at that point that wow you know in changing your lifestyle implying different things into in, incorporating different things in your life can actually have a huge impact on your health and then I started to like not just write about epilepsy but I started to write about health and different illnesses and different ways of living and I realized that you know you could have such an impact on your life if you live a healthy lifestyle but by living a healthy lifestyle, by using certain supplements, by using certain vitamins, by getting enough of sleep, by eating the right foods and incorporating exercise into my life, my whole health changed completely, you know? And so it really, you know, I, I learned, you know, that, you know, it's not just popping a pill, you know, it's, it's more than that. If we want to live a healthy lifestyle and we want to be able to focus, you know, mind, body and, and spiritually, we really need to change our life and make more of a positive lifestyle for ourselves. It's, you know, it's a daily, a, a daily exercise, you know, mentally, physically and spiritually that we have to incorporate a regimen that we have to do for ourselves. And, you know, it doesn't have to be something that, you know, it can be, something that when once you incorporate a healthy lifestyle it becomes part of you and you don't even realize it but you're just you're doing these things every day and it and it's making you feel good and you just keep doing it and it could have such a huge impact on on everything you do in life you know <clears throat> i agree and I, I i think we need to dive into this because i think a lot of people sit there and go Oh my gosh, healthy regimen. What I have to go to the farmer's market. I have to cook raw beets on my pan. Man, I just, I mean, this is too much. I, and it's not. So I think we should dive into this. And, and what you said too, with when you were in college, your, your seizures started to increase because of stress. Right. Staying up late. And stress is like gasoline on a fire. We all have yeah. it. And I tell pe people, say, oh, if I could just be stress-free. I said, you will when you die. I said, we've we, we got to empower our body to yeah. withstand stress. Yes. And, and I, I love what you said, too, when you realize you weren't alone in this. And I've gone through some things. I have five kids and some of my kids, you know, sort of doing things. And I just, I wasn't proud of some of their choices. Right. I felt like I was a, my wife and I both felt like we were horrible parents. We felt like no other parent is dealing with this. So I didn't mm -hmm. say anything. And one day I, I told a pastor, a patient of mine, and he, he kind of smiled. He says, 
a lot of people are dealing with that. <laughs> he goes, yeah. half my congregation probably is going to. I'm like, what? You <laughs> and then I realized I'm not alone in this. And right. it was so freeing. I went home to yes. my wife. He gave me a book. I read through this book and I read how parents are going through struggles, even though they're good parents. Right. You know, I made some really bad choices in my life. My, our kids are going to do it too. Yeah. And I went home and I told my wife and we felt free. We felt like we just released this heavy burden. It's like, yeah. oh, thank you, God. So let's let's jump into this because the impact of living healthy is powerful. It does take work. And I just posted today, I, I had a workout this morning, and I posted, working out is hard. Staying healthy is hard work. But being sick and crippled is hard, harder work. Right, gonna have exactly. To work, we're going to have to work at something. So let's dive in. Like, what are these specifics? And I think as we go through this with, with stress, tie in some of the hair health. Because I think there's a lot of listeners out there that will say, you know what? My hair is falling out. This is right. stress. This is a symptom. And you can't address, you can't address one symptom with one strategy. It's, right. If your hair is falling out, it's not, well, I need more B vitamins or C vitamins. Yeah. It's, it's a combination of things. So let's start jumping into this. Let's get some real specifics. What did you learn that started to, to transform your life to help you with seizures? And let's dive into this so that because if we can apply these same strategies, people, it's not even if you don't have seizures, it's going to help you with your heart health. It's going to yes. help you with your joint health, your mental health, your physical health. It's going to help everything. So, Stacey, tell us, what did you start implementing that started to, to specifically started to make those seizures come down? You know, the, the first thing I realized, you know, I started doing a lot of research and, you know, 90% of, of illnesses are caused by stress. People don't realize, but stress has a humongous impact on our lives. And, you know, the one thing I had to learn was how to cope with stress. That was the first thing I had to, you know, everything, you know, I used to get upset over everything. And then, you know, you would think about things, you'd overanalyze things, you try to, you try to, you know, want to control things, but we have no control. You know, we, you know, people want to, you know, people always believe that, you know, they want to be able to be in control, but things, you know, I think all, everything just happens, you know, and we have to learn in life. We all go through a journey in life and, you know, sometimes we don't have control and we can't control the situation but we need to learn how to cope with it and we need to find the best solution and move on. And I learned, you know, the one thing I learned is that, you know, the past is the past. We can't, you know, we can't focus on the past because, you know, it's gone. You know, what we can do is focus on the present and in the present, we can make positive changes in our lives that will affect our future. And, you know, that's what we really have to do. And also like the little things in life, you know, like so I was also focusing on the little things that, you know, little problems in my life. And I stopped focusing on the little things. And I, you know, if a, if a big problem came my way, I learned that, you know, I have to make the best decisions, try to find the best solutions and, you know, and just move on and not dwell on things and not dwell on the past. And, and, you know, you have to just, you know, that's a more healthier way to think. And it takes time. It's, you know, all these things I say, you know, it sounds so easy to do, but you know, it's, it's, it's practicing and learning and applying over the years, you know, that I'd be, I was able to become like that. And also I, you know, people don't realize what sleep. You really need to renew yourself. Sleep is so important. People don't realize, you know, people stay up, they, you know, people, you know, party or they go out and they're drinking or they're just working late at night and they're just not getting enough of sleep, you know, whatever the reason is, but sleep is so important. You know, sleep deprivation can really hurt your body. And even Ariana Huffington, I had to re I re review her book for her and she talked about sleep deprivation, how she worked so many hours and she focused on so many things and and, you know, she never gave her body enough of time to sleep. And one day she collapsed, you know, your body needs to renew itself. And it's very important to make sure that you do the proper things to help your body and sleep is one of them. And we also talk about like, nutrition, you know, eating what we put in our body is so important. You know, we live in a rush, rush society. We're always doing the next thing, worried about the next thing, what we have to do. We're running to our kids, you know, baseball games or soccer games, and we're always on the go and we don't give our time, ourselves time to rest. And when we're on the go, we're, you know, we're, we're, a lot of people are eating processed foods. They're not taking time to prepare healthy, nutritious foods. Well, you know, people don't realize, but a lot of these, these, these processed foods have 
have a lot of ingredients that are really bad for the body. And when your body, you know, incorporates these foods into their your their our bodies, they you know they don't always they it can't. It's very hard to break things down that aren't natural. You know, sometimes if you eat something, you feel really tired and sluggish afterwards. It's because your body is working so hard to try to break those foods down. And you know, and when your body can't break those foods down, it stores it. And then these, you know, uh, over time, the, a lot of these toxins, you know, build up in your system. Your organs become sluggish because it, it you know, it, it's working double time to try to function properly. And you could really cause yourself a lot of different illnesses and a lot of different medical problems. So, you know, you really have to learn how to, to eat nutritiously and, you know, and, and take time to prepare foods or take time to, you know, make little easy dishes that are actually nutritious for the body because you're not only helping yourself, but you're helping your family and the people around you as well. And I always say to people, if you can't help yourself, then how are you supposed to help others? You know, people always want to, you know, do things for other people. But, you know, unless you help put yourself first and, and heal your body first, then how are you supposed to help yourself? Yeah, I, I, I think that's a bigger challenge for women. Maybe men are mm -hmm. selfish more. <laughs> I, I've always told my kids when I was little, I said, you know what, dad's going to go work out. I'm going to the gym. I'm, I'm going for a run, whatever I had to do. And like, daddy, just play with me. I'm like, yeah. I'll play with you. Give me, give me an hour. Give me some time right. because mm -hmm. I want to play with you for the rest of my life. You know, right. the, the nutrition thing, what's interesting about the toxins, um, and I want to ask you a question on your diet, you know, what percentage is good and bad, but I, I remember hearing a pond analogy and I have a couple of ponds on my, on, on my property and they, you know, fish live in it. There's, it's alive, it's straight, good water's coming in, good water's going out. And the analogy was if I started to dump garbage in there every day, you know, a bucket here, a bucket there, yeah. it, could, it could handle a little bit here and there. It wouldn't, it wouldn't harm it. It's not good mm -hmm. for it, but it's not going to harm it. But if I kept right. doing that day after day, month after month, year after year, eventually it would accumulate, kind of like mm -hmm. exactly how toxins do in our body and our organs. It would accumulate, and then life would start to die. And if yes. life, if the pond started to die, and the fish started to die, and the flowers started to die, and I had a specialist come in to analyze it, he would look at me and go, are you an idiot? You don't <laughs> understand why this is dying? Right, you right. dumping garbage in here. Are you kidding me? He said, yeah. Stop dumping garbage, start mm -hmm. taking it out every day, give over time, the fresh water will come in, it will start to revive the, the pond and life right. will come back. But unless you do that, you're going to die. And this is the exact thing we're doing to our body. Right. What percentage do you think, I mean, a lot of people are probably saying, oh God, I'm a 90% you know, processed junkie and 10%, they eat a salad once in a while. There's a little side salad with their, with their lasagna or something. Um, yeah. So what percentage do you think is a good starting point, like good and bad? Is it 50-50? Is it 80-20? I have, I have my thoughts on this, but what do you, what do you think is, is rational? We don't have to be 100% right. super clean, healthy. You know, the, the first thing, you know, th this is going a little bit off the topic, but the first thing I think people should do, if, if we're, you know, I think it's really healthy to detoxify your body you know if you could detoxify your body cleanse your body and then create a healthy living i you know i i think you know if you have you know 20 percent unhealthy 25 percent unhealthy and you are eating 75 or 80 percent healthy and you're cleansing your body and you're incorporating exercise and you're doing the right things i think your body can withhold that you know um i you know i the the better you can eat the better you can the healthier you can live, well, of course, the better you're going to feel and the better you're going to be able to think because it even affects your, your focus and your mind and your brain, a lot of these foods too. Like I was telling my son, you know, it was so funny because he, he, when he started college, they sent him a big package and they sent these Chinese noodles. I don't know. I forgot the name of them, but you know, yeah, they, I know. They, like the you know, noodles and noodles. The yes. Package. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you know what they had, they did a, they did a study and those noodles, if you eat a lot of them over time, it could actually change your moods and it can change certain things in your brain, you know? So it tells you how strong 
food could actually be. I think a little of anything is okay, but I think when you overdo it and you do it on a consistent basis over and over and over again, I think it will affect your body. But a little bit of some, everything I think isn't going to, you know, I'm not perfect, you know, and it's very hard. Even when you live a healthy lifestyle, you still crave, you still want to have, you know, a little something of this and a little something of that. And sometimes if you don't give your body that, your mind as a human, I think you, 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 you do, you get worse, you know, but if you, if you give yourself a little, you know, time, you know, a cheat day or, you know, and you're able to, you know, get the things you want just to quench your taste or, you know, to do, I think you, you'll be even healthier because you, you're, you're, you're mentally giving yourself your mind saying, I really love that. I haven't had that in months, you know, and, and then if you give yourself that little, whatever it is, you know, I think you satisfy yourself mentally. And I think, you know, and sometimes a lot of times when I do that, I'm like, you know what, this isn't as good as it used to be, you know, I'm not really missing it, you know, or it lays heavy on my stomach, you know, sometimes when you're eating healthy for so long, your body is not used to these unhealthy things anymore. So when you, when you eat it, you're actually feeling like sluggish, your, your stomach feels heavy, or you're not feeling as, you're not, your body's not um, taking it as well anymore, you know? So it's, it's, you know, it's a little something is good, but a lot of times, like, I don't miss a lot of the stuff that I used to like, you know, before I started to eat so healthy. I, and I agree with you. I think the 80, 20, 75, 25, somewhere in there is, is realistic um, for most people. And I, I, I laughed when you said, you know, you haven't had this for months. <laughs> people were saying, I haven't had it for two days. Right, I, right. Know, it's, 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 it's I do. Yeah, know? yeah, and yeah. We have to, because people say only in moderation, Dr. Tressler. I'm like, well, what's your moderation? Because right. my yeah, moderation yeah. and your moderation may be light years apart. So exactly. how, how does this, you know, you, you have, uh, you talk about hair health and, mm -hmm. um, this is interesting because when, when I first was reading over your stuff, I, first thing I thought of hair health, when I see my patients with, I think first thing I think is hormones and then I mm -hmm. think nutrition and then right. I stop and I go, Oh my gosh, it's probably overwhelming. There's probably so many facets to this, but where do we begin? I mean, this is, this is a sign of poor health. This is a sign probably that we're toxic, that we have poor nutrition, we have poor sleep habits, poor mm -hmm. exercise habits, the very things you're talking about. Um, dive into that. What about hair health? What do we need to know? Well, you know, um, it was really interesting. You know, I had, um, when I had, my kids were young, I had chopped my hair off really short, you know, because it was like trying to take care of the kids and, and trying to maintain my hair was just too much. And then after I chopped it, it wasn't growing anymore. And it was thinning out a little and it wasn't, it was kind of looking like it's just unhealthy. Like it just, you know, I, I could look in the mirror and I just didn't like the way it looked. And for, you know, like hair in a society, like, you know, when a man, you know, starts to lose his hair, it's sociably acceptable. A guy could shave his head or a guy could just walk around with a little hair loss. And it's just, it's, it's acceptable. But when a woman starts to thin out and her hair starts to get, you know, thinner and she's starting to lose her hair, that's traumatic for a woman because, you know, society doesn't just accept that. And at first I wasn't realizing how many women actually, you know, experience hair loss and, and experience, you know, it, but when I started, I wrote, you know, a couple of little articles on my website and uh, so many people, I can't tell you, tens of thousands of people came to read the article and it just talked about different natural ways to approach hair loss and things you could do to help hair loss. And so many people were interested in it because so many people experience hair loss. Hair loss, you know, like the one of the things like scientifically, they talk about, you know, your testosterone levels, you know, as we, as we, uh, um, your, your testosterone, about 10% of it, I believe, turns into DHT. Now, DHT can cling to the, you know, with the help of an enzyme called 5-alpha um, reductase, it can cling to your scalp and your follicles and cause them to shrink, and then you could experience hair loss. But there's lots of other things, you know, stress in, in general can cause stress onto your follicles and scalp and can cause hair loss. You know, um, you know, some people, like women, they, they lose a lot of weight, and, and all of a sudden, they, your, their body goes into shock, and a lot of them experience you know, hair loss. So, and then the people genetically that have it and, you know, but then I talk about when it's genetic, you know, well, maybe your family has something health wise that they all experience. But, you know, if you go to the gut resource, if you, if you try to figure out what is the actual problem that's causing this hair loss, you know, it, I, I believe something always leads to another thing. And, um, 
the one thing I learned is um, I started working with um, a gentleman and he had created a hair loss product from um, he, um, Hair Restorations Laboratory and he was experienced in hair loss and he, you know, worked with different people and he, they came out with a natural product with, with all natural supplements and different things in it to help hair loss and he, it was working for him and then he gave me the product to try and my hair started growing and my hair started getting thicker and I was like, like I was, I was stunned by it. And I started giving it to some friends and having them try it and see what they thought. And, you know, I, I boast about it because, you know, um, it, it, there's like a shampoo and conditioner and they have like a hair serum and it, it, it's really been working. Like they have pro um, ingredients like caffeine, biotin, you know, um, uh, Sam Pometo, um, different natural things that could actually, people don't realize, but natural things could actually help with hair loss and hair growth, you know, and by eating healthier and by doing the right things, we could actually help our hair loss. And, you know, and then when I started to work with him and I started to work on different articles, and I started to write more articles. When I walked around, I started looking, you know, you start to, when you're doing things, you start to pay attention more. And I realized so many women and, and men experience hair loss. It's bigger than what you really, you, you, you know, we all experience some hair loss in the course of our lives, but some people more than others, unfortunately. And it's, um, it's really, it's something that, you know, a lot of people struggle with. And especially for women, it's really, it's stressful in general, just having to go through that. When, when we talk, especially about women, I mean, like you, you said that the, the stigma with, you know, if a man loses his hair, it's just, that's just what he had from his family. Right. But when a woman loses her hair, first thing I would think of is something is out of balance in her health. Is, right. is it more health related or are there some, you know, genetic tendencies or traits that women can lose hair or get some type of baldness or thinning that there is no control of? Well, I know with alopecia, they say it's when your your immune system goes against you. And I know, um, you know, some people, you know, I, I do believe that there are people out there that do suffer from, you know, different illnesses and uh, that cause hair loss, you know, part, it's part of the illness. But I do believe a lot, a lot of, of hair loss issues can be solved, you know, by changing your health and by using the right supplements and by doing the right things, I think you can improve your hair loss. I definitely think, you know, there are ways to improve it. I think, I think how we live life and what we do in our life, you know, plays a big impact. Like I had one friend, she was losing her hair and I was saying, have you tried this? Have you tried that? She's like, I've tried it. I said, well, how long did you try it? She's like, only a couple of days. I'm like, well, <laughs> you know, you, you know, these are, you have to, you know, if you want to, if you want to try to improve your hair and you want to try to improve your peer appearance, it's something you have to do consistently. And, you know, and some people, you know, what works for me might not work for you. So, you know, we have, you know, some people have, you know, have to do different things or, you know, some people have to, you know, change certain things in their life or try different supplements, you know, but, you know, it's always, it's, you know, I've had a lot of people with this shampoo and conditioner from Hair Restorations Laboratory have a lot of success, but there are a lot of supplements and there are a lot of ways, you know, like stress we talked about, you know, stress can cause hair loss. Well, then, we, you know, if people are very stressful, you know, a lot of people I know, you know, they get very stressed very easily. They just can't control it. You know, some people are able to like take a step back and take a deep breath, you know, but not a lot of people are like that. It, you know, it's easier said than done. You know, you have to learn how to cope with stress and then you have to change your eating and, you know, your lifestyle. You know, a lot of people that have hair loss, I talk to them about their eating habits and they have really unhealthy eating habits. Well, have they ever thought that maybe the way they're eating is playing a toll? Maybe they're not eating the, the right foods with the right nutrition and, and the right nutrients and vitamins that they need, you know, and maybe by incorporating certain supplements into their life, you know, by doing all these things, by exercising a little, because all you really need, you know, some people want to really be muscular, but, you know, in order to stay healthy, they say about 15 minutes of exercise, if you could incorporate that into your lifestyle, maybe a little walk-in or whatever, you can actually, you know, that's all you really need, you know, if you do more, wonderful, but not everybody, you know, is able to, but if you could just incorporate 15 minutes of something, you know, that's great for your body, it's great for the circulation in your blood, in your, in your, in your, you know, and it can do a lot of good for you. I agree. And, and as a chiropractor, I, 
you know, a lot of patients will say, ask me specific questions like, doc, what do I need to do about this knee pain? What do I need to do about my shoulder or whatever, whatever they're dealing with it? And I look and I, and I say a few things. One, the nerve system, the nerves in the body need to be mm -hmm. open so they can heal, so they can regenerate. Yes. Yes. We have to have the night, right nutrition to actually support the body to feed mm -hmm. it. You yes. have to be hydrated. You have to move. You have to get good sleep. And, but it doesn't have to be complicated. It no. has to just be regimented. And when you start to add these behaviors, it's like brushing your teeth. I always right. tell my patients, I give them some home rehab exercises for their spine, for their posture. Right. Their posture today is horrible. Yeah, and yeah. It, even posture, bad posture, staring at a screen hunched over can, you know, uh, obstruct nerve flow and hydration and blood flow to your scalp, to anywhere. Right. That can affect it. And you would think, this, how? But, you know, and I say, you just have to be regimented. You wouldn't yeah. go home and not brush your teeth for a week. Your, right. your spouse would run from you. That'd be disgusting. <laughs> so, or shower. We do yeah. these things over and over. So we have to start implementing some some specific strategies that don't have to be complicated, but you say, okay, I'm going to start getting better sleep. And then, but I, I liked the first thing you said, when you, when you learned to cope with stress, you began to learn, you began to mm -hmm. research. And you know, the people who are listening to this show, you're on the research journey. You're on, you know, a, a, a journey to, to learn more. Don't stop here. Keep going. Um, let me ask you something specific, Stacey, the, the, mentioned the the hair treatment are there chemicals in shampoo and how harmful is this where you know we go to the the grocery store or any store and we just grab some shampoo because it's a dollar 99 a bottle right is this harmful and we're putting these are there chemicals in there Oh, most definitely. You know, even in our laundry, laundry detergents, there's a lot of chemicals. And what people don't realize is that by law, you don't have to list everything. You know, by law, they're, they're yeah. supposed to list certain things and they have, they're required to list this, that, and the other thing, but they don't always have to list everything dependent on the industry and dependent on the, on the, um, where they live and the rules and regulations, you know, but there are a lot of, um, things that are not good for you that are in a lot of shampoos and conditioners. And I always say, if you look at the ingredients and you can't pronounce the word, it's probably not good for you. You know, and when you put these things, people don't realize, but you're rubbing it into your hair and your scalp and your scalp and your, your pores are open and it's going into your, into your, your body. You know, these chemicals and these things that are in this, in this shampoo are actually going into your pores, going into your scalp, going, you know, that's why when you use Use these serums and stuff like that, like I was talking about, and then you see this great growth in your hair, it's because it's going into your body, it's going into your scalp. So when you are using unhealthy shampoos and conditioners and you're rubbing it into your scalp, you're putting a lot of impurities in your body. And we talked about earlier, when your body sees all these impurities and it doesn't know what to do with it, it's storing it. It's storing it in different areas and your body is becoming over time sluggish and it's not working properly. And then you're seeing maybe hair loss and you're seeing things because you're 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 putting things that your body doesn't want and then your body you know is starting to get stressed out it's starting not to function well certain organs might not be functioning well and then you're going to see you know and then over time even diseases and illnesses can come about you know people don't realize but everything plays a role that you put in your body plays a role and an effect in your life. And, you know, over time, you know, doing the wrong things and putting the wrong things in your body, you could see a lot of problems in a lot of different things, but definitely shampoo and conditioner. If you're not using the right shampoos and conditioners and you, and it has a lot of impurities, you could be causing yourself hair loss or even other problems, rashes, dandruff, this, that, a lot of things could occur. You know, you're drying out your hair, you're drying out your scalp, if you're putting unhealthy shampoos and conditioners in your hair and then you know dandruff can come from a dry scalp you know your hair can become brittle and break you know and then women are seeing their hair become brittle and break and then they're using pull dryers and not taking good hair care of themselves and then even more hair is starting to break and thin out and they're like oh my god what's happening well what are you doing let's take a, a little piece of paper and write how you're taking care of your hair what products you're using you know are you using a big blow dryer and putting it on full, you know, hot heat every day, you know, these are all things that, that play a role in how our hair looks and, and, you know, and how our body reacts. 
You know, when we approach it this way, and, and hair is one element of our body, you mm -hmm. know, what we eat is another element, but the skin, and I, and I think it's about 70% of our body, it's the largest organ, so it, yeah. it covers, it's, it's like 70% of our body is skin. Um, so it's the largest organ on our body. When we put something on our skin, our skin absorbs it. So if yes. we're putting garbage and sk these skin, skin products that we wouldn't eat, why yeah. would we put them on our skin? Because our, right. our body's going to absorb, it's going to go into the bloodstream, and then the toxins have to go somewhere. Yes. They just don't float out. Exactly. They get trapped in the, in the cell. When they get yes. trapped in the cell, they ruin the mitochondria, the energy. Yes. They become sluggish. We start to accumulate more fat cells. We yes. get heavier. We get belly 100%. fat. 100%. Mm -hmm. ah, go crazy. Yeah. So, you know, if, I think if we approach this and we look at this, and especially women out there, probably more than men, look and say, okay, if you have a hair problem, approach it as a health situation, a health problem. Yes, Just exactly. Like, some, like I remember my mom once, she had uh, eczema all over her elbow or psoriasis. And, and I said, mom, I'm going to give you a, 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 a diet. I'm going to detox. We're going to detox. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you some supplements. You're going to do some detox. Cleanse out. You're not going to eat any sugar, which is inflammatory right. and inflammation. Oh, yeah. That is a root of a lot of this. And uh, she goes, oh, okay, because I deal with this a lot. I said, well, here's the food you have to eat. She looked, she's like, fruits and vegetables and what? Like, what is it? No one can live off this. <laughs> I'm like, mom, just do it. So she starts doing it. I give her these products to start cleansing. She comes back to me like a day or two later. She goes, what the heck are you doing to me? Look at this. It's worse. And I got yeah. excited. I said, mom, it's coming out. It's, yes. more, it's like vomit. It's coming out yes. of your skin. And yes. she's like, well, I don't know what you're doing to me. I said, just trust me, mom. Just hang in there. Please hang in there. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. She hung in there. And after like the third or fourth day, it started to, to go in reverse and started to cleanse and heal. And she healed herself from the inside out. Right. And she never had it again. And this is, this is the same thing. If your hair, your scalp is brittle, it's falling out, it's a sign you're unhealthy. Yes. You look at it and say, start changing inside out. This yes. Is, as a chiropractor, I love this because you, you work on the nerve system, you work on the diet, you work on your mind, you work on right. exercise. And all of a sudden, it's like planting a seed in your garden. You don't plant right. a seed, like you said, two days. You plant a seed, you water it, get sunlight, and you don't put toxins on it. You right. Let, let nature take its course and you wait. And yes. As, as it comes up, now you have a healthy plant. And I, I would think this is the same thing as, as our hair. So yes. I love this conversation. I, and I, I don't think a lot of people would even think that with hair. They think no, it's, they it's, wouldn't. Like a, it's almost like a secondary part of our body. It's like, right. <laughs> it's like it doesn't really, it's not really our body. It's just this dead stuff on it. I don't know. Um, yeah. So what, what else? I mean, we're, I, I think this is a, a really cool conversation as we start to like tie towards the end here. What, um, what else would you like to, to end with and cover to, to kind of pull this to a, to a, uh, a close? Well, I just want to, you know, now that we're talking about hair, think about women, think about the makeup. You know, there's so many great makeup brands and you got all these celebrities coming out with all these, all these different makeup and stuff like that. And people don't realize, but there are companies out there that make the makeup for them and they put their label on it and, you know, but where is this makeup coming from and what ingredients are in it? You know, there are so many impurities that are in makeup and a lot of different brands and people don't even realize it. And as we're talking about the scalp and we're talking about all the impurities that can go into the scalp and into the skin and into the cells and the body, you know, the same thing is happening on your face. You know, what moisturizers are you using? What are you putting, you know, on your, on your skin? You know, what kind of eyeshadows, you know, like when you're, you're getting chapped lips, is it because you're, you're not eating enough of nutrients? Well, that could be it too. You know, there's certain vitamins you can use and are you using makeup also that can dry out your lips and make your lips chap, you know, so you have to look at, okay, how am I eating and what am I using? You know, it all, it all plays a part, you know? And I just want to say too, is like, you know, when I first started cleansing my body and I started not feeling well, because I went through, um, I went through um, menopause at a very early age and all these different things started happening to me and I didn't know exactly what was happening, but I felt really sluggish, really tired. You know, um, you know, my menstrual cycle was lasting twice as long as it was supposed to. All these things started happening. I started feeling 
feeling aches and pains were and I was just like I so I went to an herbalist and the first thing he did is he gave me a blood workout he he examined everything from top to bottom and I was deficient in so many different nutrients you know and so many vitamins and I had you know and the, the, you know my hormones were you know had decreased tremendously but I would have never known that if I didn't get the blood workout a lot of times if you're not feeling good you know it's great to be you know it's great to do the research and find out all these things but sometimes we need to go to our doctor and we need to find out what exactly is happening and you know and have communication with our doctor and by him doing all those blood works and him examining me he was able to put me on a regimen that actually helped me get out of menopause the symptoms started to alleviate and I started to actually get my energy back I started to feel you know I start my mind was more focused I was be able I was able to exercise and those those cramps and those aches and pains were going away and it was all because I went I took the initiative I went to a doctor and they went and they gave me blood work to find out exactly what was going on. And I always tell people too, you know, even with my epilepsy, I go to one of the top doctors in the nation for my epilepsy, but I always make sure that I communicate and I, you know, you have to, and do your research. A lot of times I'll do my research and I'll come out and I'll have a list of questions I want to ask my doctor and, you know, we'll go back and forth. Well, I heard this and I heard that. And what about this? And what about that? And a lot of times too, I'll go on the internet and they, you know, there were some things I read about certain vitamins that could be helpful for epilepsy and he's like no no those aren't good you know sometimes always what we go on the internet might be fake news so you can't always rely on what you read and you have to look and make sure you're getting your resources in a reliable place I always go to places where their 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 work is based on medical journals and you know and it's 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 backed by scientific evidence and it's backed by doctors because I want to make sure that it's not just an opinion. So where we get our news and how, you know, and also if you want to feel better, you know, um, you, you really need to have communication and, and go to a professional and, you know, and a professional, you know, like a chiropractor, they're going to, they do things naturally. So you, you want to go to, you know, if you want to do things the right way and you don't want to pop, you know, one pill after another and get medication and then they, they're going to give you symptoms and you're going to go back and get another medication before you know it you have a cabinet full of medication you know go to a go to either a chiropractor or herbalist or someone who believes in naturalism and you know start working with them and communicating with them and telling them how you feel and then you know work out something where they can tell you and teach you how to live a more healthy lifestyle because a lot of people don't know how you know they don't know where to begin where do I start and you know that's when you know a professional comes into place and that's when you have to communicate communicate and work with that professional. Yeah, I agree. We all need help. I, I have coaches in different areas um, of my life. I coach people that, you know, I, I, it's just, it's a part of learning. But yeah. if we, if we truly want to know the truth, we, if we search long enough, we'll find it. And like yeah. you said, you just can't read one article. You read it, you, mm -hmm. you have conversation, you ask about it, you go to another site. And then you, as you start to, on this journey, you start to find reliable sources. And once right. you, and I always tell my patients when I give them advice, I say, just don't let it end here. You may trust me, and I hope you do, because I do my research, but you have to keep, you keep going. I know a fraction of what's out there, but right. if we keep searching and learning, we're going to find the truth. And, and you know, I, if your doctor is not helping you with what you want, fire them. Right. Say, I'm out of here. Don't yeah. base your health on your insurance or, oh, he's a nice guy. He's been in the family. Exactly. He's my neighbor. Who cares? It's, right. I, I want help. I, if I went to a doctor, I would not want a pill. I, I'm, right. I'm 54, no drugs. I exercise. I'm still playing rugby at 54, I, you know, which That's is probably awesome. crazy, but I want to be crazy. Um, and it's either you, if you want to treat symptoms, then mm -hmm. treat symptoms, go to the doctors. But if you want to get to the cause you yeah, have to search those doctors out, those natural doctors that believe the body can heal naturally, that believe right. that there's healing inside us. God created an amazing healing body, but we have to take care of it. So right. I, I love it. I, I, I hope this inspires people to, one, look at their hair and say, uh-oh, I have a health <laughs> problem, not a hair problem. I have a right. health problem. And if I have a health problem, let's start getting to it. Let's learn study, do our research. Let's get good sleep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's get good nutrition. Let's detox and start this journey. Find the right doctors to support you. Um, 
So Stacy, tell the listeners, we're going to have all your, your, uh, your website and all your contact information on our page, uh, but tell the listeners where they can find you, what you do, uh, if they'd like to reach out to you, um, some of the, some of the, some of the stuff that you coach and teach, uh, tell us, tell the listeners about you. Well, over time, you know, like I told you earlier in the conversation, I had started a little blog called Blogger, and I had about like 400 people on the website. And then I decided to create a website when I realized it's not just about epilepsy. You know, I could help more than that. I could help lots of people with my my research and my and the knowledge that I had. So I created a website, and then one day I was, you know, I still did a lot of um, freelance writing. I was, I was working with a um, a web designer, and he, um, I was creating content content for him. He said, you know, I could really make this website look nice, you know, for you. And he created a whole new website for me. And I put all my material on it. And that website grew from from 400 to 10,000 to 500,000 people. And we have tons of information. We cover every illness, every disorder. We have experts that write articles, that, that submit their articles. Um, we have different columnists that write for us. And we talk about fitness, nutrition, recipes, you name it, it's on there. And, you know, it's all about helping people. If people have a question, they can find it on the website. And, you know, I'm always, if you want to contact me, you could always contact me on the website and I'll be happy to, you know, answer any questions. And, you know, we're now we're starting to work on YouTube and starting to create videos to, you know, to com- to kind of relate to the information that we're working with on um, our website. But it's all about like different articles and how to heal the body naturally and different things, different advice that, you know, we try to give. And like I said, everybody's different. And also if people are taking medications like heart medication, epilepsy medication, depression medication, you know, a high cholesterol medication, they have to watch what they take also, you know, they have to be cautious because, you know, people don't realize it, but supplements are just as strong as medication. A lot of the pharmaceutical companies use supplements in their formulas for the medications they make. So you have to be cautious when you're taking medication we put a lot of precautions and we, we try to, you know, tell people about a lot of different herbs and, you know, and to be careful and stuff like that, because, you know, supplements can be, you know, have a huge impact on a person's body. And if you have something else and you're taking other stuff, you can have, you know, they could interact with each other and you don't want that. So people always have to be careful too. And we supply some of that information on our website and it's just, a, it's a great place to, to learn how to tweak your body and, and receive, you know, optimum health, you know, so, you know, I'm, I hope that, you know, your listeners will come by and check it out. And if they have questions, you know, leave it on the contact page and I'll be happy to answer any of the questions. Do you have a subscribe page too, where if they subscribe, they get ongoing emails, newsletters, things like that? Yes, I have. Okay. Um, you can subscribe and we have, uh, they can subscribe and they can get weekly news, newsletters. And we also have different newsletters to choose from. So if they're interested in fitness, if they're interested in herbs, if they're interested in, you know, um, different things, they can actually find, you know, a, they can check off what newsletter they want and, and subscribe to that. And the website is thecompleteherbalguide.com. And yes. if, you're, if you're driving... Don't try to type this in. This is way <laughs> too long. Just wait till you get home. Click. It'll be on the show notes. Just click, and it'll take you right there. And and I, I encourage you to subscribe. Reach out to Stacy. You know, if you have questions, start this journey. Go deeper. The more you learn, the more excited you get, and the, the healthier you get. And then you realize we don't have to live a mediocre life. That that life sucks. So yeah. that's that's why. I, I play rugby, I guess, you know, the, the, the <laughs> so, let me ask you this as we end. Um, do you have any crazy fun plans in the near future? Um, you know, I, uh, I'm just, you know, it's, it's so crazy because for everything that I wanted to plan to do with COVID and everything else, you know, I put a lot of stuff on a halt, you know, but, um, you know, I, I love to travel. I love to visit new places. And once all this craziness kind of, you know, subsides, I, I hope to like visit new places and, and see new things, uh, you know, right now. So I, I have a lot of property on my, on my, in my, in the area I live. So I try to use that as a, a relaxing type of place, but, you know, I love to go 
to places where I feel, you know, I could get uh, enjoyment and relaxation. And I, you know, I tend to write about them too. And, you know, it's, it's nice to, you know, I tell people you do things that make you happy because it's so important to live a happy, happy, healthy, and productive life. And they intertwine with each other because when you're happy, you know, you'll be healthy. And when you're healthy, you'll live a productive life because you'll take care of yourself better and you'll do more things, more positive things for yourself. And that all, you know, intertwines with productivity. So it's, you know, it's, you know, doing things to, to make yourself happy and to make others happy. I love it. And let, let me throw this at you. If I could, if I bought you a plane ticket anywhere in the world right now, you have 10 seconds to decide where would you, where would that place be? I think I would probably want to go back to to Europe because I I love the history. I love the uh, I love that everything is so preserved out there, you know. Um, and the waters are so blue. I went to uh, Positano and and I never saw blue waters like I saw over there. It was just you could just look down and you saw the rocks on the bottom and it mm. was aqua blue. And just that in general, I told my husband, you know what? I would sell everything I have in America and I would go there and 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 uh, and go on the corner and sell tomatoes and lemons for a living <laughs> just to be able to get up in the morning and to look at that scenery was just amazing i just you know it's so nice to see things that are so well preserved that have yeah. so much history and stuff like that i love it and if we take your advice and we start this journey we can stay well preserved we can stay healthy yes, exactly you know, a good a good at least 100 years i'm shooting for 120 yes. <laughs> uh, my, kids, my kids won't get much life insurance money until you know they're very old so, <laughs> so Stacy, thank you so much for being on the show today I'm sure thank our listeners you. got a lot out of it and uh, this is exciting thank you thank you so much for having me thank you for joining us in another amazing episode to make Pittsburgh the healthiest city in America or wherever you live Let's join together and make this world healthier for generations to come.